Hey everyone, this is Keith Scott from out in Sydney, Australia. I'm one of the voices of Bullwinkle J. Moose. It's time to watch Relentless and Unstoppable. And so give it up for your main hosts, Douglas Kenny and Andy McPhee. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny and welcome to Relentless and Unstoppable. We have another amazing guest coming on the channel today, so please hit like and subscribe. And after this episode, please stay tuned to the RNU channel for more amazing guests. Let's get this on! Hey everybody, how you doing? Just a, a quick uh, little share of why I started Relentless and Unstoppable. It was for one very simple reason, because of Doug Kenny. Nothing to do with me at all, zero. I was just coaching Doug and he took on the coaching and mentoring and he made all the changes. He took all the suggestions from his his parents as well as my, my coaching, but it was all about Doug, his breakthrough and his weight loss, uh, he, his willingness to accept that uh, he is dealing with high functioning autism and, and other issues, but he's never quit, he's never given up. So we did one interview with him to share his story and then we decided to start interviewing other people. And Doug has now taken over the whole channel and he does all the interviews. He runs everything. He's just an amazing young man. So RNU was born from simply what an amazing young man Doug is and his story needed to be shared. Nice, nice. So what is ghost writing like exactly? What's the process? Well, it's different with every client, to be honest. Um, the process normally consists of me meeting with my clients for sessions. Our sessions work very similar to therapy sessions. So it's just a normal conversation. And people share with me their stories. And I ask questions. And I, you know, when the amazing thing about share, uh, someone sh vocally sharing their story with you is a lot of the times people start remembering things as they're sharing the story because a lot of people have never vocally shared their story, their entire story with anybody. And so as stuff starts coming up, I'm able to peel back layers in people and really learn who they are at their core, how they talk, how they share a story, what their tone is. And then I put together an outline and I present it to them. If they're agreeable to it, then I start writing their book and we meet every week to go over every chapter and and we finish the book in that manner. That's amazing. I see you've been watching a lot of Shrek lately. Shrek? No. Layers? Onions? Oh, no, I, I don't <laughs> watch Shrek. <laughs> you know what I'm No, but I always, I always like... I always think of healing as an onion, though, because yeah, there's yeah. just always like a lot of layers to healing. And um, I don't know how I came up with that, but I've never seen Shrek. But I've never. Is that in Shrek? Yeah, that that was a line that was actually written, I think, in the 80s, but it became very popular and sensationalized. Maybe I heard it. I, maybe I probably heard somebody using that analogy, but it makes so much sense because that's exactly yeah. how it is, at least for me. Like, I feel, you know, liberated from something that I've been dealing with. And then all of a sudden I become aware of something else. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. It was a uh, more popularized after the movie Shrek came out. Oh, so you'd okay. have to watch it. You'd have to watch it to understand, but yeah, it's a great phrase though. You know, I'm on the autism spectrum. I have bipolar, I have ADHD. And I actually recently have a good analogy for what I deal with, which is my mind is like a Rubik's cube, although you have, although in my case, I have to keep it solved, you know, for mm. example, let's just say that bipolar autism and ADHD and the symptoms, they're all the, you know, the colors on one side of the Rubik's cube, you know, and what happens if they get scrambled and become a mess, your mind sort of goes haywire and you're not able to, in that moment, function right. So what do you mm -hmm. do? You have to address it by solving each part of the puzzle. And then what happens when you solve it? You're in a good place again. However, if you allow yourself to slip as back into it as life goes on, you'll at some point you're going to in the mind, you know, be scrambled again and be back to square one 
However, it'll be easier to get out of it this time because you mm. did it the first time. Oh, that's a good analogy. I like that. Yeah. In my case, though, I have to make sure that the colors don't get scrambled like every day. You know, like you yeah. said, it's, a, it's an everyday process, you know. And there's things that you learn um, to do along the way, you know, when you're working on yourself that helps ground you and, and keep you in a good place. Yeah, for sure. So what other achievements have you got since um, all that stuff that you have addressed and are trying to deal with still? So um, one one thing that I'm very, very proud of is public speaking because oh. public speaking used to be a huge fear of mine. I never even dreamt of speaking in front of a crowd. Um, but I started listening um in my self-development journey in my early 30s, I started listening a lot to Liz Brown and he inspired me and I had a coach at the time. And so she helped me um, get some speaking opportunities. And one accomplishment that I'm very proud of is one day she called me and she said, hey, Shireen, um, the Women's March is tomorrow. One of the speakers backed out and they need someone to come on stage and perform a poem and I know you write poetry do you have a poem that you could perform there's going to be 5,000 people in the audience I'm like oh my god I had never memorized any of my poetry but it was so um coincidental or, or I want to say it was like a divine synchronicity that the year before I had attended the women's march and was so inspired that I wrote a poem about women and so I remembered that poem and I had one day to memorize it and everything that could go wrong the next day before the parade, before the march went wrong, like everything. Okay, I'm not even going to go into it, but everything went wrong. And I ended up at the march having to park like a mile or two miles away from the stage with my two little children because the sitter backed out and I'm running like all this way with my kids. I get to the stage like two minutes before I'm supposed to go up and I'm like, Oh my God, I think I forgot my poem. <laughs> and so I'm having to like re read it on my phone real quick. And then I go up there and I see all of the people and it was just like, adrenaline you know and I performed the poem and I was so proud and to this day like I just will never forget that rush and then also looking out at the crowd and seeing my kids there watching me and it was such an incredible moment for myself so now after that experience I really enjoy public speaking yeah that's pretty awesome you know things don't go always a hundred percent right the first time you do something i've learned that in general you know and that reminds me of a similar experience i have if you want to hear it sure when i was in a uh, middle school and even before that i struggled with confidence when it came to being around people just because i was shy and was always afraid that i was going to fail at everything no matter what and and I realized at the end of my fifth grade year that I somehow needed to find a way to get that confidence so that I could, you know, believe in myself. And after doing some consideration, I decided to to partake in the talent show for Estes Park Middle School next year. And my decision was I was going to perform a rendition of uh, Bobby Darin's Beyond the Sea. You know that song? I don't. You need to catch up on your uh, movies and classics. I don't see it uh, yeah, because of my writing. I don't really have time ever to watch movies. Uh, <laughs> well, so I, I, I like to tell people I live in a little bubble, a little bubble in a cave. <laughs> and all I do is write books and school my children. <laughs> All right, you should listen to the song after this, but basically it's a it's a love ballad from the 1970s that was that was uh, popularized when the movie Finding Nemo came out because it was the credit song. Mm. But anyway, but anyway, um what happened was I decided to perform a rendition of that song and I had no experience with singing and one time declined an offer to sing in front of my class because I was so nervous, but I knew I had to get out of it. So I decided to take a risk and I talked, I wanted to have sort of like a partner with me since it was sort of like a, a ballad, you know, so I had a, a schoolmate of mine that I was close to be a backup singer. And then my science teacher 
Mrs. Taylor came on board and it just, it grew into a very spectacular act where we had ballroom dancers dancing in the background. And I had Mrs. Taylor and my friend as the backup singers. And then I had our music teacher, Mr. Varlick play a trumpet and then there was a disco ball that launched the entire audience into cheering and an ovation and it was it was a great great act and a great moment and and I got a round of applause I mean there were moments where my singing voice got a tune or a note wrong but everybody loved it even the younger kids that were watching it was fabulous and by the time it was over, I just bowed and soaked in all the applause and the cheers. And then I just jumped in the air and just was so excited. And <laughs> even though, it, and that was actually a pivotal moment for me because the next year after that, at the, after that act, which was at the end of my first middle school year, for the first time, I sat at a stu at a table at lunch with other students wow. aside aside from my best friend and then from then on my confidence just grew by the time I was in high school which is when I came to Arizona I was confident and social with people so it just that moment was a big part of what led to R&U oh, and my awesome. transformation That's awesome what an awesome story yeah, it was a very good moment in my journey. And I even have pictures of it. And I, I was able, luckily, to recover a recording of it from the school years after it happened. They sent it to me in the mail, and I watched it with joy. And then I uploaded the footage to the r &U channel. You should check it out. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing that with me. No problem. I've It's just... The world can be positive. It depends on how we make it to be. Yes, for sure. Um, do you have any other questions for me before we end the interview? Yeah, I have one more, which is uh, what is the impact you want to leave on people with what you do? Mm. I the, My message that I want my work to to leave with people is to have the courage to speak our truth no matter what and to understand that it's not our responsibility for other how other people react to our truth it's our responsibility to always speak our truth and I want my work to reflect that and I hope that all of the books that I have been a part of plant seeds and other people to love themselves and to start the journey of speaking their truth and healing their trauma. That's a really good message. You know, I've noticed, and I don't know if you've heard, but I've noticed that around America, there are some laws and legislation being put in place for, you know, people that are victims, you know, of abuse. And they're, they're putting in legislation that's going to make it difficult for, for, you know, for people that obviously commit abuse from, you know, being able to sue their victims for silence or for, you know, avoiding certain accountability. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Have you heard that those legislations are being put in place? No, I haven't. Yeah, I've been reading up on it. And that's hope for the future because, you know, women need to be, and not just women, but everybody everyone. needs, yeah. everyone Everyone needs to be able to speak their truth without fear of silence, you know. A lot of the time in my uh, career field, though, the biggest obstacle that people have about sharing their truth is worrying about what people are going to think of them. It's not really the legal aspect of it. It's more so about being judged by family members and friends. And it's because a lot of people carry so much shame and guilt for their past and the truth is, is that we're more alike than different. And that's what a lot of my clients start to experience when they share their stories with in books and talking about it with people is that most everyone resonate with our experiences, the ones that we hide deep down in us because we're too scared to say it out loud. Most people can understand those things. So it. It takes one person to have the courage to speak it, to help other people release that shame to speak their truth too. 
Yeah, definitely. And it's not just women. It's also for men and even yes. children and even yes. children, you Humans. know, yes, it's all humans in general, you know, and so I'm glad that that legislation is being put in place and hopefully it gets somewhere and hopefully we won't have so many sex crimes like what's been going on lately, you know, hopefully that'll be reduced by a lot. That's my hope. If yeah. ever, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity to come on here and share with you. I, I really appreciate the invitation. Um, and I people anyone that's watching this that wants to learn a little bit more about me, they can visit my website, ShireenRivera.com or RisingAbovePublishing.com. And you can email me as well at Shireen at ShireenRivera.com. Sounds good. So that's all I have for now, but I thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it. No problem. So everybody, I'd like to thank Shireen for appearing on RNU. Thanks to Andy for the mentorship that led to, the, to my self-growth and to the RNU platform. And everyone, we'll see you next time on Relentless and Unstoppable. Thank you so much. Gee, that's all we have for Relentless and Unstoppable. So tune into the next episode to hear more amazing stories from amazing guests. This is Keith Scott from Sydney, Australia, saying so long, and uh, I'm smarter than the average bear. Gee.